Hi Vinny Gang, Vinny Guy here. So today I'm here with Tofu and Dumpling and we are going to talk about how to bond with your guinea pigs. So the reason I wanted to do this video today is because I get DMs, Facebook messages and emails every day. People asking me questions of how do you bond with your guinea pigs? Why is my guinea pig so afraid of me? So just to you know give you a little bit of spoiler, it's not gonna be easy and it takes time, but it definitely is rewarding. So I am going to give you a couple pointers on how to bond with your guinea pigs. So key to bonding really starts from understanding the guinea pig. You know, I keep telling you guys this, but you have to think like a guinea pig. Right. So let's say imagine yourself as a guinea pig, you're in a pet store or you're from an adoption center with a bunch of strangers and then you first come to a strange place. So it essentially feels like you are abandoned in a completely new planet. And all of a sudden this giant size of like, you know, 20 times your height approaches you and tries to touch you. You've never seen that creature before, you're obviously scared and you're going to hide. So that's essentially what's going through guinea pig's brain when you first bring them home and then when you approach them. Okay. So let's think about the two different cases. So there's first case, this giant right from the beginning tries to chase you and catch you. First instinct that you're, that's going to go through your mind is you're going to run away, right? But imagine the second case where Giant um, has your favorite chocolate. Aww. And he doesn't move. He just slowly gives to, gives to you and just stays there for however long it takes me. 30 minutes, one hour, two hours. And eventually you kind of understand this Giant doesn't have any harmful intention toward, toward you. So you start to open your heart a little bit and then start to approach the giant. So this is kind of how you need to think when you're thinking about guinea pig. And it's really important to see their facial expression, their body gestures, to see what kind of thought might be going through their mind. So it's really important to observe their behavior. Whether this is your first day with your guinea pigs or it's 100th day with your guinea pigs and if you're watching this video and if you're interested in the topic, they are probably still a little bit scared of you. So you have to understand and you shouldn't be hurt about it because they're prey animals. When they see you, they see you as a threat and that's an instinct. So you have to be really patient because they are the ones in a strange environment with strange creature that's multiple size of themselves and they are always constantly thinking about surviving. So take your time and have patience. So I'm going to talk about the experience that I had with Pina. So when I first got Pina, she was only two weeks old, super scared. So what I actually did was lie down in front of her cage and extend my arm so that my hand is in front of the Heidi. And I just left it there without moving for 30 minutes or a little bit more. And like once she knew that I'm not moving, I'm not a threat, she started to approach me. So the main lesson of this is you have to let them approach you, not you try to chase them. So I guess the first step was about them getting familiar with your smell, your hand, and your gesture, right? Uh, but the second part of the lesson is to correlate positive things with you. So the best way to do this is hand feed them. Of course, you can hand feed them, you know, vegetables or treats like you need that pea flake or even hay. So at the beginning, it's really important that you always give them something that they like consistently with your hand. So the third tip is floor time. So floor time 
It is an extension of spending more time and getting your guinea pigs to be familiar with you. So the reason you have to do floor time is because if they're constantly in the cage, then they not only they don't get enough exercise, they don't get to interact with you uh, skin to skin on a daily basis. So when you first year get your guinea pig, or if your guinea pig is still afraid of you, you need to have floor time maybe 30 minutes a day. But if the time allows, have an hour a day or two hours a day, but more the better. So what I do, I, I obviously have things to do too. Or maybe at the end of, end of the work or end of the day, I just want to kind of chill, watch TV. But at the same time, you can take advantage of those time to interact with your guinea pigs. So what you do is just have a liner on the floor and you're gonna sit on the liner, right? And then you're gonna have a blanket and then you're gonna let them out and they're going to crawl under you and going to proactively sniff you, feel your warmth, maybe lick you and try to nibble on your toenail or something. But all this interaction is a way to let them get close to you and trust you. And at the same time, you're doing your favorite activity. Maybe you're playing game or you're watching TV or you're eating, whatever. So just spend a lot of time with them. And when I say spend a lot of time with them, during floor time when they can touch you and feel you. So if you follow the first three steps, your guinea pig is already familiar with your presence and they're less scared of you. So now it's time for us to pet them. We all waited for this moment. Right, so I'm going to show you an example with this uh, tiger doll and how to pet your guinea pigs. So what you do is you're going to have a treat, vegetable or you know pea flake. You give it to them while they're eating and busy eating. Start touching their nose. You know, gently pet their nose. Next step is from nose to top of the head. Gently stroke it. And once you are able to touch top of their head you can start scratching behind their ears like this. They're gonna love it once they get comfortable with it. And then it's really up to you. Um, at the end of the day, they're going to let you touch more of their body parts if they trust you more. So like sometimes if they really trust you, they're even going to let them touch their butt, like maybe a little bit, a little bit of belly, even the foot. So I think the petting also helps build that relationship because it always pushes the comfortable boundary and I strongly encourage you to do so as well. So the four tips that I talked about, they were essentially for getting your guinea pigs to trust you and now they trust you enough for you to pet them a little bit at least. Right, so next step is mental stimulation, teaching them tricks. So to give you my own example, Peanut was able to do a lot of tricks in a shorter amount of time because so she was so driven to get the trick, right? Uh, and Tofu and Dumpling, they were a little bit slow uh, in following, but that's because they were maybe a little bit lazy. They just didn't want to listen to me, whatever the reason is. What I want to tell you is every guinea pig is different, but don't give up because they will all turn around. So you have to go step by step. So one of the easiest tricks that you can usually do is stand up. If you just put the treat a little bit high and then tell them to stand up, a little bit high pitched voice, then they will stand up and they can relate that motion with the trick so they will keep doing it. And another one, another easy one is climbing onto your lap and some other one is asking them to put their paw on your head. So take it step by step, be more patient. So some of you guys will ask me, so why tricks? So tricks, it's not for your entertainment. It's going to entertain you if they do it, but it's not really for that. The reason you have to do this, I mean, I encourage you to do this, is because of the mental stimulation. Guinea pigs, in order to keep them happy and healthy, you have to keep things different, providing them new things, give them new challenges, keep them active. Teaching them tricks, you know, does exactly this. 
and I encourage you to keep trying until they turn around and they'll be happier than ever. So sixth tip that I want to give is get to know your guinea pigs better. So every guinea pigs are different, just like how every kids and children are different. So what they like is different, what they hate is different. So to give you an example for mine, um, Peanut loves carrots, Tofu likes cucumber, Dumpling likes anything. When, it, when they're getting petted, Peanut, getting, Peanut likes getting petted anywhere, Tofu likes getting chin rubs, and Dumpling doesn't like getting petted in general. So the reason that you have to do this is because I'm talking about how to bond with your guinea pigs, right? If you keep doing things that your guinea pigs don't like personally, then they won't want to be around you. So you just have to keep doing things that they like, as long as it's gonna keep them healthy and happy, right? And they will like you more. And it's like liking on top of trust and they will want to spend more time around you. The seventh tip is help your furry friends guide them. So if you have only one guinea pig right now, uh, it's definitely going to be harder for you to bond with the guinea pig. Uh, if you have another guinea pig, like two or more guinea pigs, it definitely makes that all easier. It's not only good for their own health and social health, but it's also good for the owners as well. Um, to give you an example, Dumpling was very timid guinea pig when I first adopted her, but once she saw Peanut as the alpha or a friend, uh, Dumpling started to mimic what Peanut does. And Peanut was definitely more outgoing, more social. She loves hanging around with me. So in a matter of like a couple days after um, the hierarchy was set, Dumpling started to like, approach me as well. I definitely encourage you to adopt another guinea pig to help with the bonding process. So I hope the seven tips will help you in getting closer to your guinea pigs. So the essence of the video is to let you guys know that guinea pigs has, have feelings, preferences, and thoughts. And it's an important role for a guinea pig parent to really catch all the hints and make sure that we understand what they're thinking and need and provide those. So as long as you keep doing those and increase the positive interaction between you and your guinea pigs, they will trust you more and you'll be best friends. Well, thanks for watching guinea gang. Bye.